All right, everyone, welcome to the first interview in Madden Men history. Uh, the interview is with someone who I think we all are interested in knowing a little bit more about, Daniel Racco. That guy. What, me? That guy. Yeah, this is all about just letting you guys get to know us a little bit better. Um, every week we'll be interviewing someone new, and what better place to start than right here at home so that you guys know us a little bit better. So, uh, Daniel not only is a gamer and a killer ultimate team drafter, right? He's also the producer of Madden Men. He's a father, um, soon to be father yet again, a uh, little baby on the way, baby girl on the way, right? So That's we're looking right. forward to meeting her in the next six months or so. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Uh, father, gamer manager, leader, and all-around cool guy. A collector of several, several, <laughs> several gaming and pop culture uh, pop culture been, collectibles. Yeah, I've been known to buy a video game here and there. Every now and then? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I like old stuff. He likes old stuff. He likes Van Damme also. I'm uh, guilty of of being a, <laughs> quite the Van Damme fan. Right on, yeah. Van Damme's a cool guy. What's your favorite Van Damme movie? Mm. I have probably seen Bloodsport and Kickboxer in equal amount of times. Okay. Um, but is, man, is the coin toss between the it's two? It's like asking a parent to pick their favorite child. Like, there's so many great okay. ones. How do you do that? Fair enough. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but I've heard from parents in the past. I just had. I just had my, you know, my second child. There's always a secret. Four favorite. months ago, yeah, and they say there's a secret favorite. I haven't, I haven't experienced that yet because they're so far apart. And I, fortunately, you've got the same thing going on. Your oldest, Alex, is sixteen now. Mm. Sixteen, and your youngest is Z negative neg six months negative, right now. Yeah, right. So. Hopefully we won't have to deal with that because they're going to be greatly different people and they're growing up in very different worlds. Technology is... So different. Yeah, it, it's in a whole nother place. Whole nother place now, so... Right on. We, we won't make you choose a favorite Van Damme movie. But yeah, a little trivia quiz for you. Uh, you can put that in your back pocket. This guy loves Van Damme. <laughs> Alright, so... Got a couple questions for you. Uh, and this question is going to be the first question that we ask of all of our Everybody. interviewees. No matter who it is. Because we're all gamers, and that's, that's really what we're here for. We're bringing the world to our community, and our gaming community, right? So, what's your favorite video game of all time? And you know, I knew this was the first question. This is the only question I knew was coming. Right. right? Or that right. I know was coming. Right. Um... And it's a hard one. I think it's easier when you don't play as many games because sure. you know, you sure. know okay. somebody can just say, "Oh, Super Mario Brothers" or whatever. Right. Um, but I can go deep with you on this what question. You got? Okay, so I won't say Madden because okay. I because here's where I'm going deep. I don't consider Madden a video game. Like even though it is a video game, okay. when you talk about what's your favorite video game, I kind of put that in a separate category altogether. Right. Like. My answer would never be Madden or NBA or Forza or NHL right. because those sports games are sports games and there's a new one every year. Okay. But if you look at hours played, then uh, then yeah, I mean you would say statistically Madden is my favorite game okay. because of all the games ever I put the most hours into it. Sure, okay, fair but enough, that makes sense. That sort of makes it feel like a separate thing. Maybe that makes sense. So I look at more games that are like experiences that have a little sure. bit of a story and that kind of thing going. And it's changed over the years. I think uh, I'm big into story, like story over challenge, story right. over over length. You know, length is is you know it can be a hundred hours or it can be eight, as long as it's compelling and engaging. So, gotcha. um, so it's hard to give one, but I'll try to get. I'll try not to give a ton. I'll start with Maniac Mansion on the NES. All right. It was uh, like a mystery. There was. You know, I vaguely remember this game. Zero 
uh, combat. It was more of a point and click kind of find the clues and, and get through the story. Well, gotcha. Okay. Um, I'll move on to Shinmu one and two on Dreamcast. I can't say one or two. It's this. It's a. It's a series that that will finally get finished sometime in the next few years. Is gotcha. bringing it to PS4. So. Shinmu, because it's just a big immersive world where you went and talked to people, found your way right. around. Shout out to the Dreamcast for being uh, innovative. That was so a killer many, console. So many great. How it died, I'm, I'm sure you know better than me, but yeah, it's an interesting console. Sony's really good at what they do. Is oh. is how how All that right. happened, and, and Sega was not as good. But sure, uh, yeah, the Dreamcast gave us Shinmu. It gave us the 2K sports. No series, doubt. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which you know, basketball fans, if nothing else, can. Right, you know, the Dreamcast did that for you. So, yeah, no uh, doubt, no doubt. Yeah, shout again. Yeah, shout out to the Dreamcast on that one. Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy Tactics on the PS One. Yeah, were no doubt. Amazing. And here's a weird one that is. I won't call it my favorite game. Okay. But I'm really into it recently, and it's called Until Dawn on PlayStation Four, and it's a right? horror game. Right. That is. 90% choose your own adventure there is the most minimal amount of like time button press sequences and running in like a couple spots where you fire okay. a gun but it is all immersive what you say here will have a consequence three hours gotcha. later okay. all the time and a killer choose your own adventure yeah yeah, okay. yeah and there's just not enough games like that so it was so right. unique and different and i want more things like that where cool. yeah, yeah, what yeah. you do matters and it's really not so much about can you make these jumps in time or can you shoot eight things it's uh did you feel like you experienced something because you played it so and don't get me wrong i love halo uh, and I love the story in Halo, so it, it is high up on the list. But right. I guess I'm just making the point that you don't have to. It doesn't have to be action to be a good game. I just think fair. It's to be okay, fair enough. Yeah, so, yeah, nicely said. So I appreciate a long that. answer, but you know, no, no, absolutely. A lot of the hardcore gamers out there will know what I'm talking about. Where it can be kind of hard to just go one. So. Absolutely, fair enough. Fair enough there. <coughs> oh, he's the world just open. All right, so. You've got a pretty extensive collection of video games and video game merchandise, right? So what is your most prized piece in your collection, and then why? Anything, a broad answer would be anything Sega, because I'm just a big weird Sega fan. Okay, uh, why it, Sega? I think, bec I think I like underdogs a lot. Okay. I, I think, especially around the time of the Sega CD, it was so ahead of its time it fair was fair enough yeah again shout out to sega once again for another innovative console they right? took a lot of chances yeah. and i guess they took a few too many they made a lot of financial risks there was some you know this we could do a whole separate episode sure, where, I, where I tell you what sega could have done differently and uh -huh. why it didn't work out for them but sega cd sega saturn sega dreamcast those three systems specifically you know everybody had a genesis at one point because you know it was it was the cool system at, at one time right. but sega cd was a weird system so i yeah, guess it was an expensive system and also. it was way too expensive yeah. at the time it cost three hundred dollars yeah in 1993 or so back and when it, consoles were a hundred bucks yeah, yeah and it, it exactly and yeah. it assumed that you had a genesis so it was also like putting stuff together mm. but at the time, and a lot of people call this a failure, but full motion video games, games with people in them. Sure, sure. Um, so probably my favorite game out of the bunch was Double Switch, which starred Corey Haim, by the way. Well, I don't show um, Corey's. But I guess if I had to pick one thing, um, there's a game called Panzer Dragon Saga yeah. on the Sega Saturn, which is no super, yes. super rare, super expensive. So it's just okay. one of those where I just like, look, but don't touch. That is Panzer Dragon for the <laughs> Sega Saturn. I, I don't know that it's the most valuable thing I have, but because it's on a Sega system, it's just, you right. know, it makes it more special Special to me. place in your heart, huh? Yep. Fair enough. All right, so... You've mentioned in some conversations in the past that there are things that you've done over your tenure of collecting, of, of amassing this immense collection of games and gaming merchandise that if you had to do it again, you wouldn't. So for, for those gamers out there now or for people out there now who are at the beginning of their collections or, you know, they're collectors themselves, 
what advice do you have for them? What are those things that you that you did that you wouldn't do again? What did you learn whilst amassing your collection? A lot of things, but I guess if I could narrow it down to a couple things, I would say this. Collect things. It's more fun when it means something to you. Right. So I went through a phase where I was collecting anything that I thought was going to be valuable later. Okay. Or anything that was valuable now, but it wasn't necessarily something I ever played or had any feelings sure. for. All right. And so if I could do that again, I would have spent that money. It's not that I wouldn't have spent that money, because just to be honest, I probably would have, but I would have bought things that meant more to me. Like, I would rather have, um, like, you and I stayed up until I don't know when playing Hot Shots Golf, right? Right. right. So I would like to look at my shelf and see Hot Shots Golf on PS1 and have a memory about that right? versus looking at my shelf and have, uh, you know, some N64 game that I never even played just because it's worth a couple hundred dollars. Right. Right. So that, you know, $5 Hot Shots Golf. Because in the long run... Um, are you going to sell your collection? Most of the collectors are not. So right. collecting for value is really a weird thing to do anyway. So I would say either collect things that mean something to you, and sometimes that stuff is going to be nice and collectible and awesome. Okay. Um, I would say if you're passionate about, like with Sega, for example, go go deep into Sega. Don't you know? Don't waste time collecting Xbox games if if, if that's going to deter you from finishing a, every Sega CD game that there is, you sure. know, like it would look way cooler to have a, a corner of your room that is that is a complete something than to have a lot of things. Um, although I've changed my pattern here recently and I've, and I've kind of gone back to that where I've narrowed out some things that didn't mean as much to me and I'm, I'm just filling my shelves with things that I've played, not 100%, but I'm getting there. Um, and things that, you know, if it's a game I wanted and never had, or if it's sure. a game that I had that meant something to me, gotcha. that kind of thing. So don't do it just to do it, and don't get wrapped up in buying collector's editions just because they're collector's editions. Uh, also, yeah, um, if you're going to collect current stuff, collect definitely, I go back to that, collect something that means something to you because things are more mass produced now and it's sure. and the way the internet works now it's not a big it's not as big of a deal to go back and get something as it was in the Fair past enough, yeah. so yeah. don't don't feel like you've got to go buy that monster edition of dark souls 3 just because it's a collector's edition if you'll never play dark souls 3 or if you just think right. it's going to look good on the shelf get something that means something to you you know even if even if it costs 30 dollars, get some game that you played when you're at eight years old that you're so excited about getting for Christmas and you don't have any more of I feel like something that you were uh, a place that I thought you were going and I could be mistaken right is that with this newer stuff that's coming out uh, let's take Dark Souls for for example there's a Dark Souls collector's edition I'm sure right that comes with a ton of bells and whistles and what have you right but if you're let's, let's say you're going to play the game spend the 60 bucks get the game right and two years from now or a year from now, when that random kid who bought the game and bought that collector's edition, but what isn't really a collector, when when that kid is done with everything, hit him up for it. And because everything's so mass produced, maybe it's more available to you. The quantities are there like never before now. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's also a thing. Also remember, if you're not collect, uh, this is a, a separate thing that I wanted, and I'll be quick about this this answer. If you're not getting a collector's edition right. and you're not going to play it today, don't even buy it. Don't buy it until the day you're going to play it. And that's a separate okay. thing that I'm, really, that that I'm really going to talk about to people later is if it's not a collector's edition and you're not going to play it, everything exists digitally now. You will be sure. able to play that game at sure. some point. But sure. if you just keep your eye on Amazon, that game is going to be... 20 or $30 at some point instead of $60 today and you weren't going to play it for four months anyway because you're a collector and you've got way too many games to ever play. I know this is not coming from somebody that doesn't know. Okay. Just wait. You know, sure. It's there's it, it's not a big deal to just wait. Everything everything comes around. All right, fair enough. That's, yeah, that's solid advice. We appreciate that for sure. All right, so we're about to make a sharp turn, sharp turn real quick. All right, we're over here in gaming world. But now we're over here. Over here in man world. <laughs> 
All right. You're about to have your first daughter. Straight my tie. That's yeah. From Man World. Yeah. You've got a 16 year old son, as we previously mentioned, right? Mm. All right. So you've raised a boy, and all things that come with boys, um, girls are made of different stuff, bro. They just made. Trust me, I got a 15 year old Sugar daughter. Sugar and spice, right? Sugar and spice, everything nice. Boys have frogs in their pockets. Well, Aaron had frogs in her pockets at one point also. But really quickly, she stopped putting frogs in her pocket, and frogs became gross. And a lot of stuff, like my little tomboy daughter, turned into a little lady. Right? Mm. And not all, not all girls do that, and I'm not trying to characterize females in any way. But I say that to say boys and girls are different. What do you expect to be the most challenging part about raising a daughter versus raising the son, you know, the awesome son that you've already raised? I'm not trying to flip the interview, but this is uh, be a good question to ask you about because it's different now if you had a 15-year-old or a 10-year-old sure. or maybe even a 5-year-old. I think it's different now because of technology and just the you know like right. there's such a gap there that I almost treat this like a completely new thing. Sure, um, sure. I you know, I tell that to people all the time. I, you know I tell that to people all the time. You know, you know they say well you you know you you had a daughter before and you're kind of going down that road again and not at all, not at all. The world is an entirely different. place. It's a different place. I think the the you know the emotional part of it right. doesn't really change, but right. everything else changes. So, sure. you know the a baby today and you know by the time it's three years old is is can can learn more things on an ipad than you and i could have learned through like third grade exactly no doubt yeah these kids are shut up these kids are crazy smart man they're doing algebra in like third grade and all kind of weird stuff and because young brains are so adaptable they learn so quickly um that i it's hard to even it's a new experience i i'm what do you want your child to know what do you want what do you want this baby to know early on that that, that the that 2016 world allows them to know? And I'll give you give you an example. For me, it's a new language. I want Elena to know French as well as English, and I want her to go ahead and have those experiences pretty early on. There were all these lame CDs and DVDs back in 2000 and whatnot, it's but not, yeah. it, again, the world is a you lot different in 2016. You got to pronounces everything right, for right, you. Right, right, right. Um, I think that's that's sort of just open up the culture and sure. and just learn things that entertain you, but but learn things. Just just yeah. push them to use their mind and to do things that make them happy, but to do things. Yeah. Yeah. And just know that the the world is more accessible than ever now in good ways. In a, in a really good in way. In good ways. You know, yeah. we can For get better or worse, we talked about that. The internet is the best, best and, and worst, worst thing, thing ever. Yeah, absolutely. Best and worst thing ever. So, so we can use that in all the right ways. And I just, I just wanted to get out there and, you know, just like every parent, I just wanted to be happy, but know that so you can make a difference. Healthy make life. a difference in the world and be happy and, sure. and don't be scared to do things. So I just, I hope that I can just be supportive and directive at sure. the same time sure but you know i don't know i've never had a baby girl i'm just never ex- had a baby girl ex- ex- just excited to not uh, to mention this we're 30 something now right mm. um you were 19 20 yeah 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 and i yeah. was 20 21 when aaron yeah. was born both of our kids blessings oh my god blessings and there's i i can't emphasize that enough um, very active in our children's lives, and they've been nothing but joys to us. But they took us by surprise. You know, they caught us by surprise. Mm-hmm. Both of these kids were, in some ways, planned. Right? You know, I'm talking about mm-hmm. uh, Elena, my four-month-old, and again, your negative six-month-old child. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're they're planned out a little bit more, and I think we're at, we're now at a point in our life where we have the luxury of preparing for them a little bit more you know that's really cool if you're responsible right. because there's way too many guys out there that aren't but that's a different show altogether but if you're responsible and you have a kid young yeah and can interact with it like that's the most energy you're ever going to have so that part of having a baby when i was you know when when, the, right. when when you've got a four-year-old and you're you know 23 24 years old you know you're still it's not been that long since you were playing with toys and that kind of sure. thing too. And it's just easy to, to get in there. Fair and, enough. Yeah. So I wonder 
and I plan on doing, plan on trying at the same level. Yeah. But I wonder how good my imagination how is. Yeah, so it'll be. That's interesting. Okay, I yeah. think I think there might be. It was probably easier to connect at a younger age. That makes sense. I can see that. But here's hope. I think I can uh, see that. Now, rightly so, you said you know that's a conversation for another day or you know for another episode. But let us say it, Madden men. We're all about being solid men, about being good men, and responsible members of society. And a big part of that, a big part of the commission that we have is to take care of our, cho- our children, to raise our children. If you've got a child and whatever, that, that kid's out there, you're their father. Be there for them, raise them, tell them what what you know they need to know to navigate this world. Uh, We're raising a generation of gamers. Alex is a gamer. Aaron is a gamer. I'm sure our daughters, our young daughters are going to be gamers. Um, I stand by this, and I'm I'm sure, and you stand beside me. Um, We want our culture to be respected as positive positive uh, members of the world's overall society and that's the challenge that we're putting out there to everyone take care of your kids it's interact interact with them raise yeah. them raise them and we're here for you this is a this is more than just two guys sitting on a screen this is a community and if you ever need to talk to someone you're getting stressed out by it you young fathers out there if if there's anything that we can do to help to help you out you know I was gonna try and find the right words to say but that's as that's as simple as it gets if there's anything that we can do to help you out let us know it and oftentimes it's just an, an, a pair of ears yeah. and a, a perspective that's a little bit different talk to us we're everywhere social media madmen.com you got a direct email to us if you've never met me talk to me yeah, no yeah, doubt. We're not the kind of people that don't engage back. If you, if you send us a message, we will talk to you because that's what we're here for. That's we what love we're it. here for. Yeah. We love it. We love it absolutely. But interact, yeah. That's it. and you know we'll move on. But being there is not being in the same room or the same house. Being there is interacting, and I think absolutely. that just is, gets passed on too often. Have conversations with your kids, and the earlier you start, the the easier it'll be. As you know, Alex and I have a great relationship we're best of friends hang out all the time do fun stuff together and when the life stuff comes up it's just an easier conversation because we're talking naturally it's not like some awkward weird conversation get two player games yeah yeah watch stuff you know watch stuff interact he's having he and I are having the best time just going back and watching 90's sitcoms and movies together Uh, lately where to come from that huh yeah yeah so yeah a lot more to come for that so watch out for that but no doubt interact is so important yeah alright back to this guy (laughs) alright and back to gaming now this PSA is over alright alright so what was the first game you ever beat you know the first game I ever had was the NES is yeah. the NES first console and it came with Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt I couldn't beat Super Mario Brothers really World 8 4 like the final level really couldn't do it couldn't do was it was it the, that uh, the little maze yeah the maze it was yeah, too much so to annoying and getting there was so <laughs> annoying and uh, so someone uh, uh, one of my girl cousins came over one day <laughs> and like like speed ran the whole thing right and just made me feel like a loser okay um so you could beat it after she showed you how to beat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think games like Pro Wrestling and Excite Bike count. Um, I never. Could you finish Excite Bike? Was there a finish? To I that think game? it just sort of got weird and went on forever. Okay. Sort of like Donkey Kong. So that's right. another one. There's probably something before it, but um, oh, maybe Super Mario Brothers two, okay. and if not that, then Mega Man two. Okay. Which I can't even beat a stage on today, but somehow beat the game <laughs> back then. No doubt. All right. Uh, favorite Mario game? Favorite Mario game? Super Mario World. Spent so many wow. hours on that game. Although I do I, two, three, and World. I love. Past that, I feel like the quality. Like they're still fun. Still like to play them, but I, I feel like 
it's a series peaked at world okay and then when it went 3d it's just i don't know yeah i just didn't love it as much as some people all right fair enough all right so you're not only one half of madden men you're also our producer right so it'd be weird if you clap at home but feel free to what Right, it's slow, labor of love. Thank slow you. three clap for our for our producer here. Thank you. All right, and we've come a long way in the last year and a half that we've been doing this. Uh, we 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 led to this point early on that there are some people out there who know us from things we've done in the past, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of that we called our beta test. You know, a lot of it was just getting to the point where we where we feel comfortable doing what we're doing now. Um, but with that in mind, what have you learned over the past year and a half that if you had to start everything over again, which we're kind of doing right now, where would you start? That's such a fun question, and I would love to talk one-on-one to anybody that's thinking about getting into this and needing advice. Again, messages, because we're here for... We just love interacting and helping. Right, so, absolutely. Um, I would have done more on YouTube sooner... Because we did a lot of Twitch stuff early on. We did a lot of Twitch stuff early on. We did a lot of stuff without a without cameras and mic yeah. and the right microphones early. Yeah. Um, it's. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's also not so bad like people think. So, um, what I would have done is I would have started on YouTube right away, and I would have learned how to promote sooner. Um, you know, I was just like, I would have gotten on Twitter and, and, and Facebook and that kind of thing. Get your friends involved sooner because, um, it's, you know, it's it's sort of early on. I was like, well, I don't want anybody I know to see it because I'm kind of shy about that stuff because I'm just shy in general. Sure. Um, but I don't care if strangers see it. It's sort of a weird thing okay, yeah. like that. The internet's weird that way, but yeah, it is weird. Like I, I think, exactly uh, yeah, just weird. getting more friends involved with the process to give feedback and that kind of thing. And I would have learned to also say this. Um, I would have learned to video edit sooner because that's also sounds scary. But you know, after having gotten into it, it's the basic video editing is not as bad. There's and because of technology, things are so much easier sure. now. Like they're easier today than they were when when a year and a half ago. Okay, so, fair enough. Gotcha. Um, but just do it. Just get out. If you're thinking about doing it, just try it. Try it. Because it's fun. Don't punk out on it. Don't overthink it. Huh? Yeah, don't overthink it. Um, speed can, to some degree, trump perfection on it. Don't don't sit around overthinking it. Okay. Yeah. So just just do it and just. Twitch is great, but but Twitch seems to have sort of settled into where it's going to be, and and we still love Twitch and we love doing stuff on Twitch. But uh, yeah. you know, you it's just if you're not going to be streaming every day, uh, then YouTube's a great place to be and just Absolutely. just learn how to tag your videos. Right. Um, just just uh, just say what do I need to get on YouTube? A webcam and a capture card if you're going to play games. Yeah, like. A lot of this stuff we use now, we it's nice that we have it, but like there's plenty of uh, you know there's cheap webcams and 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 more affordable capture cards, or you can capture a lot of stuff with your PS4 and Xbox now, and um, Sony Vegas 11, which is what I started on, was on sale on Amazon for like twenty five dollars. Nice. So it's you know don't feel like you've got to spend a fortune on Adobe Premiere just to start. You can you can start with anything and work your way up. All right, fair enough. Yeah, solid advice. Mm-hmm. Solid advice. Uh, you hinted at it being easier to deal with strangers online mm-hmm. than it is to deal with, I guess, your friends in the real world, and mm-hmm. that's absolutely a true statement. PSA moment. Madden men, we do not, when we're losing a game, go hostile, cussing people out and berating them and being anything short of a of a good winner, a good loser. You know, when you win, you say good game. When you lose, you say good, good game, good game yeah. congratulate the winner. Um, you'll meet some really cool people when you do that. If someone beats you in a game, they may know something, and it may have been luck, but they may know something that you didn't know, and you can benefit from their knowledge much more than you can 
benefit from upsetting them, right? And there, there's nothing to be gained by upsetting a stranger. There's tons to be gained by befriending one. So, yeah, let's be classy out there. Uh, in the wise words of, what's your guy's name from Anchorman? Uh, what's that dude's name? Will Ferrell? It's Will Ferrell, but what's, what's the character's oh, name? Oh, Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. In the wise words of Ron Burgundy, man, stay classy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And let me clarify that. I say it's, e- it's easier to put yourself out there in front of strangers and I, I don't mean that because uh, it's easier to be mean to him. I just mean that it's um, it's sort of like hard to take judgment from people you know. It's like sure. it's just it's, it's hard to go up to say to someone you've known for for fifteen years and say, "Hey, I'm making videos on YouTube now. You should check them out." It's You're much easier. Right. Much easier. You're to, absolutely right. You know because because you know people are. Uh, I don't know. It, that's and that's a Daniel problem where people you just if you're passionate about something and want to do it, then you need to do it. And if people aren't supportive of it, then that's their problem and definitely not yours. So that's something I've learned over a year and a half too. That's yeah. If I can go back and take another answer back, is yeah. don't worry about what other people think. Um, your videos may be horrible. I look back at at what our first ones were. They were definitely not great. And right. you can think what you want of what we do now, but we've come a long way, and we like what we do, and we're proud of it. And um, you know, we know who and what we're doing it for, so we have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And you know, if that's, I wish I would have put us out there and just gotten more convicted about it sooner. Sure. So right. yeah, so completely different answer there. It's just, it's don't be so worried about people, what people think, because the right, if if you're if the right people are in your life, they're going to be supportive Absolutely. of the things that you The world do. is so big, you're going to find like-minded people. That's one thing you'll know about the internet. Try and make a make a, a unique gamer tag or PSN screen name, and you'll quickly learn that you're not nearly as <laughs> unique as you thought you were, which means there's a ton of like-minded people yeah. out there. And right? that's true in streaming and in every single facet of life. Absolutely. If you want to do something then you need to start finding a way to do it and finding the right people to surround yourself with to make your life happier. Fair. Alright, so every week we're interviewing a new person. That's right. right. Who is it that you most want to interview in the future? And dream big. There's no limits here. Who would you most like to interview? One person ever. Yeah. And there's so many, you know, but... Um, if I could only pick one, it would just be like I would have to pick John Claude. Van Damme. I was about to say I've already like given the <laughs> given that answer away, right? I've already given it away. But JCVD for I mean, <laughs> what is it that you like most about this dude, man? Tell me about John Claude Van Damme. You know, just in real life and in so many of his movies, right? He he just starts at an underdog position. And works really hard and succeeds. Fair. So, you know, so, yeah, he, he's some kid from Brussels that, you know, think of him, you know, put him against, you know, so many people want to say, oh, he's not as tough as Chuck Norris or he doesn't know deadly martial arts like Steven Seagal. Well, this dude is a legit kickboxer in his youth. And so, you know, I'll put him up against some people, but physique, his, his martial arts training and his. The entrepreneurship of coming from where he came, right? Learning English, sure. Getting, you know, you don't just fall into these movie roles, you know. Sure. So sure, for sure, him sure. to have the success he had, um, and then you know, you watch the movies like Bloodsport and Kickboxer, and you know, um, Lionheart. That's Li- my favorite. Oh, Lionheart's one. a great one. Yeah. Universal Soldier's not so much an underdog movie, and Time Cop's not, but you know, I could go on and on, but. Um, you know, they're just they just got you pumped. Like you know, you sure. like you come agree, away from yeah, this you're and right. you're like, you're right. Absolutely. I, I want to work out and I want to learn karate and I want to do something awesome with my life. You know, it's just I don't know. I just I guess it's just it's all about your mindset going into the stuff. So he was uh, a source of a lot of happiness for me. A lot of a lot of that that kid you know okay. like movie star inspiration and um, I don't know. He's just I, I just. That's that's my number one action movie Fair star. Enough. With that said, Jean Claude Van Damme, your number one fan is sitting beside me right now. Uh, I can attest to 
He thinks the world <laughs> of you, and he just gave some legitimate reasons why. So thank you for motivating, my friend, and thank you. you're welcome here anytime. All right. Uh, anything you want to say to the people before we uh, shut this down? If you've watched this much of the interview, I just appreciate you being here. appreciate you checking out the show. I uh, would love, love, love feedback. Constructive feedback, please. Um, just what you'd like to see out of the show and what you'd like to see out of us. Uh, we're all over the place. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, just talk to us about the show. And, and when we say we want to interview people, we want to interview people. So if you're out there streamer youtuber game designer um if you work at a uh cereal factory uh making boxes and you want to talk about your job or anything you're passionate about yeah let's talk because yeah. if you're passionate about do. us we want to talk to you not us if you're pas passionate about a thing we want to talk, talk about to it. us yeah. yeah you can come so, talk to us and that's it and that's uh just going back on on the other thing, if you're if you're interested in something, then start looking into ways to do it and uh, making that happen. And you know, I may not know how to put you on a spaceship, but I can point you in the right direction for motivation for that. So you're welcome to talk to us anytime about anything. Perfect. All right. So this is our first interview. This is our guy Daniel Racco Draco. Catch him here online. He's on Xbox, PSN. Um, computer what have you facebook you know twitter all of the above we're all over the place all at him solid guy wealth of knowledge good to be around thank you all right <laughs>